Oh, sugar honey iced tea. It's the EAC show. Good day, ladies and gents. I'm Emilio A. Colon. And this is Marcus Mack. And we are the EAC show coming to you from sunny South Florida for episode 37 of the EAC show. So glad you guys could join us. Have a lot to talk about. We're on our um, EAC headlines day Wednesday to discuss a few topics in sports. Marcus Mack, finally, finally, we have baseball. Yeah. <laughs> not, not, not what we were exactly hoping for, but we got it. We, we definitely got, got something. Some, some baseball. Kind of I don't care that I don't know how to pronounce not one of these guys' names if they're not from the United States or from Cuba, or from the Dominican Republic, or Puerto Rico, or whatever. We got, we, we got universal, we got the universal uh, scream out. <laughs> that's baseball. The yeah, that's universal. Man, listen, I said it on our social media page, Marcus Mack, and for the fans, you can check it out, the EAC show on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that. I basically said, the, to be able to hear baseball being played, the crack of the bats, the pitching, the sound, Oh, it's just so enjoyable to see the green grass, the dirt, pitchers, catchers, infielders, outfielders, managers, all types of stuff. It's just extremely enjoyable. And shout out to ESPN and shout out to the Korean Baseball Organization for coming to this agreement to be able to provide us with six games a week. They're going to live. The, they're going to put the games live. They're very early in the morning, but the rebroadcast is around the afternoon time. But shout out to ESPN and the Korean Baseball Organization for giving us baseball in some way, shape, or form. Uh, Marcus Mack, I don't know if you got a chance to look at some of the stuff I sent you, uh, but tell them a little bit about what the atmosphere is if they haven't seen it so far. Well, I know, first of all, I want to uh, say congratulations to all you uh, baseball lovers. <laughs> and I know, I know uh, Emilio is definitely leading the, 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 the troop of people down to wherever they got to go to watch this. You're not going to be in the seats, but you will be able to see it. What they, do, what they have right now is they have, like, uh, TVs in the seats, or they have, they have it available where you can do, like, a big Zoom call and everybody can, can tune in, but you can't be in the stadium. So everything is going on. Same game, there's no one in the seats, but you can view from home. So on um, their first pitch was actually what they did, Marcus Mack, is they put a little boy inside of a bubble. And normally they throw out the first pitch by hand. They actually rolled this little kid in the bubble. He walked in the bubble all the way to home plate, and that was the social distancing first pitch for Kids Day in the Korean Baseball Organization League. I love, I love the creativity. I, I'm, I'm loving how these guys are going about it, man. Everything from, you know, NBA. I can't wait to see what any NBA does as a, uh, as a solution to this whole uh, COVID pandemic. Um, I, I would love to see what NFL is doing. This is just great. We, you know, we, how they did the draft and everything. I, you know, I love the creativity. Listen, it was remarkable to actually see you post on our story that you actually are looking forward to seeing basketball. I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. You know what it is? You know what it is? Because, you know, co coming into the EAC show and joining, joining the team, man, it was like, you know, I don't know anything about sports. And you, Emilio, for all the listeners, they said, man, Matt, we got to get you on here. We got to get you on here. Just, you know, they, they'll love you. We just get you on here. And the more I'm part of the show now is the more sports I'm watching just so happy now can't really watch as much. Listen, listen, for you guys that don't follow and, and just tune in for the first time and hearing myself and Marcus Mack speak, Marcus Mack is being educated to the finest when it comes to sports. The pre-production meeting was literally better than the actual show that we're probably going to put together because he was so excited about the topics and speaking about stuff. And I guarantee you, 36 episodes ago, he couldn't tell who Kevin Durant was and only knew yeah. him because he played for the Brooklyn Nets well, yeah. and tore his Achilles. Yeah, you remember, you remember when we was doing a, a, a pre-show, a pre and I was like, wait, what's the guy with the messed up heel? He just went to Brooklyn. Oh, yeah, yeah. Kevin Durant. That's the only reason why I know him. Marcus <laughs> Mack didn't even know who Kevin Durant was episode one, so we, we're, we're definitely making progress. But I'm so happy baseball's back. It was very enjoyable. I watched both replays. I did not watch them live because they come on really, really early in the morning. And you know what? I was able to actually enjoy the product that's being played on the field. Is it a slower game? Is it quiet? There's not that much emotion in it. I don't care right now. I'm just enjoying the fact that it's actual 
baseball. Yeah. The balls are being hit. Bases aren't really being stolen, but guys are running around, hitting home runs, you know. Which, which is all the baseball enthusiasts want, except for the – the only thing you're missing, which you can get it at home, is the hot dog. Yeah. You know, the pop, or the popcorn, everything, everything that you need in the stands, you can get that at home. But for, for all of the baseball enthusiasts, where do you – if you know, do you know where you can catch this on TV? ESPN. ESPN, ESPN? has it all. Okay. ESPN. ESPN has it all. Marcus Mack, not for nothing, the best part that I've seen so far – in these games that are being played, there was a moment where a batter struck out and the umpire literally took his hand and went down to the ground and created like a lawnmower action to call him out. Like yeah. that was his strikeout call. Like he was pulling the lawnmower cord to start it going. Like get your ass out of here. <laughs> that was yeah. hilarious. Everybody's doing everything they can, man. We'll talk about it. We got one of the headlines today uh, talking about other other uh, sports sports leagues that's doing what they got to do to get players training, but we'll talk about that for the uh, for the headlines. Yeah, I was just so happy. Shout out to ESPN and the KBO, the Korean Baseball Organization, for putting that together. I'm so looking forward to the rest of the games. There's still four more games this week, so make sure you check them out on the ESPN platforms. Now, Marcus Smack on our EAC uh, social media page, our Instagram page. I came across something today while I was exploring some stuff for my kids that I never even knew existed. This is a sport that's brand new to me, and I tried to bring it to the people that follow us, and this is called netball. It's okay. a similar sport to basketball, but they play with no dribbling, and they play with no backboard. It's like, it's like the sport that they play in Hogwarts without the, without the broom. <laughs> it's just like that. Okay, all right. Yeah. I mean, it's also similar to lacrosse because you have defenders, midfielders, and forwards. The defenders stay within a certain range and can't pass a certain range. The midfielders could go in and out the defense and come into the attacking, but they can't go into the scoring range. And then you have your scorers that they're only allowed to stay within a certain area. But shout out to the Silver Ferns, New Zealand Silver Ferns women's team. They are exceptional. They are absolutely exceptional. A really, really good team. Marcus Mack, I know you have a little bit of information. We did some pre-production stuff before the show started. Explain to them how good this women's team is. Okay, extremely good. Okay, so let me check out the, uh, the numbers first, right? And I'm going to make a point after I state these numbers. So the, the men's, which is... Uh, do I even have the name of the men's team? No, I don't. It they're, just they're, they're, called, they're called the, the, men's, the New, New Zealand men's team, the New Zealand men's netball team. Okay, so the New Zealand men's team, they, they beat the Silver Ferns, which is the, win, the women's team, but look at the numbers here, right? So they're, they're, uh, the, women's, the women's head, the, 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 their head shooter, they, she made 22 shots out of 23. And their other, their other top shooter made 12 out of 16. So the men's head shooter, which was, you know, he, he's supposedly the person in the whole league who dominates the circle, which the circle is right by the, right by the net, for those of you that don't know. Um, this is a miracle. Marcus Mack is speaking about sports. Right, right. <laughs> right. So um, the men's, their top shooter, they finished at 48 shots out of 52 shots. Now, the reason why I'm making that, obviously the men made more than the women. They beat them. But if you look at the ratio of shots, look at the talent. Now, this goes back to what we was talking about with uh, the women's soccer. And as far as them getting paid substantially, you understand what I'm saying? They should deserve the same amount, not the same amount, but the same percentage as the men are getting because they're putting up top quality performance. Why not? I mean, I was just so... I was so enthused and so excited watching this sport. I watched like three silver uh, fern games back to back. I saw a couple highlights. I saw them beat the crap out of Zimbabwe. I saw them go. I saw them go neck and neck with um, England. I was just literally just tuning in because I was just so intrigued by this sport, the skill level. Cardio all day long in this sport. They're running up and down the court nonstop. These women are really, really, really fit. So I enjoy the sport, and I'm, I'm a huge fan. I'm such a fan, in all honesty. I ordered my daughter a, a, a Puma Silver Ferns hoodie that's going to come to me in, like, I don't know, maybe, like, two weeks. <laughs> you know what? You know what? That gives me a thought, right? 
because of this pandemic, there's a lot of sports around the world that a lot of people probably don't know about that they're going to find out now because they probably don't went looking and searching. Because I know one thing for sure, I'm going to be checking. I'm definitely going to be I'm checking. Exactly. I am not. I repeat, Marcus Mack is not a, sp a, a, a sports guy. And we he, all know he, this. You are now, sir. Look at you I right am now. now. <laughs> I am Listen, now. So when I get when I get this hoodie from the from the silver the silver ferns, when I get this hoodie, I'm gonna put it on my my daughter, and we're gonna make a video, and we're gonna shout out the silver ferns, and we're gonna thank them. This this, this hoodie is actually coming all the way from New Zealand, so I don't know when the heck I'm gonna get this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, obviously, shout outs to you for still making sure the merch gets sold. <laughs> um, <laughs> gotta got, got support gotta support the ladies gotta support yeah. the ladies well i'm gonna get into this promo real quick for the show Wait, and then we're gonna on, get but since, we, since we're talking about business real quick before you get into the promo since we're talking about business we, we all know that the uh covid19 has been affecting everybody including all sports leagues and obviously the silver ferns is no different you know they're uh, right now taking a 20 percent pay cut because of this 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 uh COVID, COVID pandemic. Man, shout out to them. We appreciate everything that you're trying to do to keep this alive and keep this going because you know what? The pay cuts, the pay cuts are important because if they don't take those pay cuts, some people might end up losing their jobs because they got to pay the players. So yeah, shout out to them for thinking about the bigger picture and not the smaller picture. Yeah, you know what? They're taking the same pay cut, the same percentage as the staff in New Zealand. So big shout outs to them, you know, um, for still giving us top quality product and um, you know, and taking this this uh, you know, taking this pay cut with their chin up and their chest out because I know there's a lot of people that's upset, but you just gotta you gotta deal with it. That's the time that we're in. So I'm a I'm an I'm an official member of the Silver Ferns team. So shout out to them, and uh, I'm I'm definitely gonna be checking in on netball even after all this is done. So this part of the show is brought to you by El Cubano Sandwich Shop. Dot com. Use the promo code EAC and receive discounts on online pickups or delivery orders. Enjoy a cafe con leche or that natural pre-workout shot of that Cuban coffee to start your day. Daily lunch specials and their steak sandwich is next level. Once again, use the promo code EAC. That's El Cubano Sandwich Shop, 954-906-5110. Remember, use the promo code EAC, and that's El Cubano Sandwich Shop in Coral Springs. Marcus Mack, I know we got our EAC headlines. Mar for, for the viewers and the fans that are out there, you have no idea how excited Marcus Mack was for this. I had to constantly remind him in the pre-production show, Marcus Mack, leave this, this stuff for the show. You're burning through content for the show. Yo, but you know what? You know what? Uh, for all the viewers, let me, let me give you just a little insight into what occurs pre-show, pre-EAC show. We talk about the topics. We first of all, you know, as you know, we have uh, social media Mondays. We send back and forth a bunch of stuff we see on social media, right? So for EAC headlines for Wednesdays, we send these topics. And when Emilio sends me the topic, this this is probably maybe about an hour before the show. That is when I first look into it because that's when you get the news, like later on in the day. So when I see it, and I'm like, he always tries to send me something funny so I can talk about it. So, you know, so when I get good headlines, I like to read everything through so we can give you guys a good show. Um, I can't help but to laugh with some of the stuff I see. And, you know, one of the first headlines, which is uh, Major League Soccer, they are doing medical screening so they can, uh, so they can allow the, the players to have workout time. So in their respective workout outdoor facilities, it's not mandatory for them to go. But they have the option to go to these outdoor facilities in their respective areas so they can uh, so they can practice. Now, Marcus Mack, I know that you know this. It just came down not too long ago also that the NFL has also laid out careful development protocols in order to get their team facilities back open. Everybody's trying to be – they don't want to be the first one to do it. They're trying to figure out who's going to take that leap, and then everybody else is just going to open up slowly but surely. So shout out to Major League Soccer for getting their players in, treating them, testing them out with the, you know, the hands-free, um, not touching thermometers and, and making sure everybody's okay with this whole COVID-19 stuff. And shout out to the NFL for trying to get everything back to some sense of normalcy, some sense of what we're used to as a country with all of our sports being played in this country. Um, Marcus Mack, I know I did see something. The Miami Dolphins did release a statement saying that they're trying to come up with creative ways in order to bring in the fans, maybe 
not 60,000 fans in one game, maybe spread them out, maybe 15,000 here, 15,000 there in different sections, smaller so they can withstand the loss that they're going to take because it's going to happen. There's going to be some financial hit. Of course. They're, they're definitely prepping for it. Um, you know, just the, 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 um, the workout sessions at their respective facilities, that's going to start for the NFL as of the 15th. So I wouldn't be surprised. You guys look out for it. I wouldn't be surprised if they actually film some of these workout sessions. I don't know if they're going to, like, when they're running drills, they probably won't, won't, won't show that. But the workout and stuff, they'll probably give you some kind of visual on that just, to, just for the fans. So, you know. Right, they want to give the fans as much access as possible. Like how we should be recording our pre-show because our pre-show is probably 10 times funnier than our actual Not show. Raw footage is actually, it might be a vlog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so maybe. I mean, I'm just, I'm just very happy. I'm seeing more activity. The KBO was the leader. The KBO was the first league in the whole world to get going and playing games. So the Korean baseball organization, they're playing baseball. They're the leaders right now. And now we're going to see other leagues slowly but surely take their, you know, steps in order to get their leagues going so I'm thinking that we're going to see the NBA, then the NFL, Major League Soccer, NHL. We're going to start seeing MLB. We're going to start seeing these leagues opening their doors slowly but surely. Slowly but I know surely. for a fact, listen, I know for a fact I got some information about the MLB. Unfortunately, my source asked me not to go with it. I can't go with it. I'm never going to burn my source. I wish I could because it's exciting news for the fans, but... This is how it works in this industry. Unless you get the green light to release stuff, you're not burning any bridges. So I'm not trying to burn no bridges. Yeah, well, as of right now, uh, the Major League Soccer, they'll start training on May 6th. And um, as of May 15th, like I, got, like I told you guys, the NFL will be training. So you guys look out for that. And just know they will be coming with some uh, – with some heat for you guys real soon. They not they not absolutely because Marcus Mack, they want to get going too. Like people want to start doing things. Like you have no idea. Like even here, I give you a prime example. I know a guy that literally drove all the way from North Carolina all the way down here just to like, yo, I gotta get away from this. Like this is this is ridiculous. This is insane. Like because at least here things are kind of like opening, you know. Like I saw a couple signs dying in like limited spaces or whatever, you know, like things slowly but surely are starting to open up. Ball is life. Shout out to Jesus Shuttlesworth. Ball is life. <laughs> <laughs> Ball is life. <laughs> so Marcus Mack, what's our next EAC headline? Our next EAC headline, we're going into boxing, which everyone knows, or if you don't know, is Marcus Mack's favorite thing to talk about. So um, one of my favorite fighters, if not my favorite fighters for my generation, uh, Mike Tyson, he's been offered a million dollars to fight rugby players in Australia. Now these rugby players aren't just regular rugby players that play rugby. These, ru these guys are rugby players who's, that's trying to transition into boxing. So they're trying to sick the old pit bull on them. Right? So now, mind you, like we talked about last episode, Mike Tyson is 53 years old. Right? Still rumbling. Listen, I mean, you can see it. You can see it in the training. I that, can't wait to see him in the ring. I don't care who they throw in there, he's lunch me. I don't care who that, he's that clip, That clip of his trainer taking the punches, his trainer did an interview, and his trainer was like, yo, listen, I see my life flash right That's before my eyes. <laughs> yeah. He was like, I saw my wife, I saw my daughter, I saw my dog. He's like, I saw everything flash right before my eyes when that last right hook came in. You're gonna take a shot for Tyson. As a oh, matter of fact, you, no. For you guys, for you guys viewing on YouTube, obviously Marcus Mack has his yak. And for you guys listening, Marcus Mack just took a sip of his yak for Mike Tyson. Yeah, definitely, definitely. We're not taking a shot for Tyson, I take that back. We're taking a shot for whoever it is they sitting in that <laughs> ring. Whoever it is they sit in that ring with him. You know, and I, you know, I we talked about this a couple episodes back. Uh, you know, Jordan has the last dance, he's come out, and along with him comes Magic Johnson, and who knows who else wants to come out with the documentary. So they get their 15 like seconds of fame. 
Yeah, they're 15 yeah, seconds. I mean, you got to. I, you, as, a, as a business guy, as a guy who loves entrepreneurship, who loves business, who loves seizing the opportunity, you know, I, I talk to guys all the time saying, right now, COVID time, this is the time to get in on a lot of different things because when there's stress, in the economy, it's time to find things to make money off of because something is going to boom. So these guys are seizing the opportunity. They see Michael Jordan. They coming out. He coming out with this last day. You got to pick Mike Tyson though. Huh? Hold on. Uh huh. You got to pick on Mike Tyson to seize the opportunity. No, he's not picking <laughs> on him. This is what, which I was going to tell you guys. Evander Holyfield. He's announcing a comeback as well at 57 years old. Now you know I love Mike. But you got to give a van to Holyfield is his prop. And he said, man, listen, oh, oh, uh, Mike Tyson is coming back? Oh, me too. He bit my head off. I got to come back. I got to show him what I could do. 57. If you guys ever watched the interview of Evander Holyfield, when Evander Holyfield was being interviewed, they asked him how he felt when Mike Tyson bit his ear off. He said, I wanted to bite him right back. <laughs> the words of a champion. Now, listen, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not mad at Mike Tyson going to get a million dollars. I feel like the person that's trying to fight Mike Tyson for a million dollars is making a huge mistake. Mike Tyson could still knock you out in, you know, less than a second. You in my opinion, I think Mike needs to do two things. One, he needs to shrink the ring because I don't think Mike Tyson can go into that big ring that he's not, you know, he's 53 years old. He don't have the cardio level to go, you know, running I around in that know. ring. So don't say papa. <laughs> listen, Marcus Mack, I know you're a fan, but listen to me. He can't do three-minute rounds for for eight rounds right now. There's no That's chance. Oh, wait. But I, maybe I, I didn't know. Is there, like, a difference in ring size? Is there a difference in... in That's the point that I'm trying to make. I'm trying to make that if this is a fight, like a, a surprise fight for, like, I don't know, that they're trying to put together, make a name for these rugby players, put on a spectacle, whatever it may be, there's certain things that Mike is going to have to agree to because his body just doesn't allow him to do what he could do before. Yeah, he might look good hitting his trainer for a few seconds here and there. No, wait. Here's what I'm saying. In regular boxing, right, that we know, the boxing that we know and love, is there a difference? Like, you see how there's a difference with um, the amount of rounds and the time in each round as there is in boxing? And there I mean, is it depends. If it's an exhibition, it's probably only three rounds of, you know, three-minute rounds, you know, if it's, a, a like, a, a sparring session slash exhibition, it might be five to seven rounds. Which it I depends on what they agree on. I don't see I don't see 53-year-old Mike Tyson fighting more than three rounds. I, yo, listen, we know Mike Tyson. Those of you that don't know Mike Tyson, he's the knockout king. He is the man. Listen, Mike Tyson is the man that had people who bought front row seats mad that they spent five figures on those seats. That's who Mike Tyson is. Mike Tyson is the man who got in the ring, a guy went to the bathroom and came back and the fight was over. Let's not forget that he doesn't need three rounds. This I, is Mike I, Tyson. Marcus Mack, I don't disagree with you. Mike Tyson is electrifying TV. But we're talking about Mike Tyson at 53 years old. Hey, listen, man. I'm not saying he's not capable of doing it. I'm just saying it's not a smart business decision to make Mike fight anything past three to five rounds. Let's, let's just do the math. If Mike Tyson gets a million dollars to fight for 12 minutes, he will gladly do it. Indeed. Indeed. 12 Indeed. minutes. We're talking about four rounds, 12 minutes. Five rounds, we're talking about what? 15 minutes. A million dollars in 15 minutes? Listen, Mike Tyson eats children for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 three, the three people, shout outs to Brian Amatruda. Um, he's an he's a, a Australian boxing uh, promoter. He's tr he, I don't know if he's going to fight all three of these people, but I could guarantee if he fights one and it goes well as far as uh, producing numbers, that they'll line up everybody else, whether he wins or loses. So the, the three people that they're, that they're looking at that might be potential opponents would be Barry Hall, Paul Gallen, and Sonny Williams. So S Sonny Bill Williams. So um, the Evander Holyfield, that, those, that comeback, in those matches, nobody knows as yet, but I can guarantee you I'm going to keep looking into this. And when they have those opponents ready, 
I'm gonna let you guys know. Just now listen, let me play something. Van, Vander Holyfield saw Mike Tyson training and was like, yo, this guy's up to something. And then it gets released that some rugby guys want to fight Mike Tyson for a million dollars. And Vander Holyfield was like, We're going to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to Australia. Right. Said, we're going to Australia. Yeah, take yeah. me on the first flight. I'm gonna matter of fact, I'm gonna go to New Zealand and I'm gonna get a silver fern hoodie. For yeah. Emilio on the EAC show. That's what yeah, he said. I'm quite, I'm quite sure they're gonna have to do some kind of uh some kind of medical uh medical treatment first or just to check them to make sure everything is good before they step into the ring. But I can't wait. It'll be great. Um that's our last headline. Um my name I told is you, Mac. I told you, I told you the pre-show was gonna be better than that. My name is Marcus <laughs> Mack. I'm going to find out what's good. Listen, because I have to be there. I don't care how they be there. I don't care if they do me like how they do it in Korea with everybody in the seats and in the little TV screen on the Zoom. Whatever it is, I'm tuned in. It's going to be me and my yak. My name is <laughs> Mac. I, yeah, y'all keep it cool. Because well, I'm there. Guy, well, guys, this is going to conclude episode 37. Make sure you check out episode 38 of the EAC show. Click like, subscribe, comment on YouTube and all social media platforms. We do appreciate the engagement and we try to interact with the actual fans and the comments that they leave. We really do appreciate it. Check us out, episode 38. Uh, tomorrow is the release of the NFL schedule. So we're actually going to have some football talk on um, episode 38 on Friday. Marcus Mack, I appreciate you. And we'll check you out, episode 38. Thank oh, you. sugar honey, I see. It's the EAC show. Mm -hmm.